Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno, the founder of Roman Rural Style. Today, we're going to be talking about cold weather dressing and the importance of layering. Okay, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. By doing that, these videos will come right to you. In addition, if you would like to receive our free 47-page ebook, grab it. It's right down there. And if you like this video, if you find it useful, I would appreciate it if you would like it right down below. And we're going to be linking you to the article over the art of manliness. That's uh, going to be an extensive article, have a lot of details, go into a lot more specifics of what I'm talking about here in the video. That's going to be linked to down below as well. Okay, so how to layer and why is layering important? And let me first talk about why I'm qualified. Or you know, I'm not some you know, I don't live up in Alaska. I do live in Wisconsin though, and it's cold here. And during my years in college in Iowa. I worked as a radio communications uh, tower, spe- you know, hand basically. I don't. Know. We called ourselves specialists, but in any case, rain or shine, throughout the year we were climbing these radio communication towers. I remember this one out in Walker, Iowa. I mean, literally almost two thousand feet high. Now we could take an elevator up fourteen hundred feet, but you were climbing that last, you know, six hundred to five hundred feet, and it is cold up there. Literally on some of these towers, I mean, and those 200 foot towers were nothing to brush at because you'd be climbing up that tower and there would be ice all over the tower. I remember carrying up a wrench and just banging it as we're going up and ice just falling off and just making our way up the base layer. This is the one that you actually wear next to your skin. The most important thing about the base layer is that it, it needs to be able to wick away moisture because depending on what you put on and how quickly you can tear it off if you've layered properly, you know, if you get too hot, but you're possibly going to be sweating. And if you're going to be outdoors, moving around out there hunting, you know, walking, covering a lot of distance, you will be sweating. And you want to be able to have that moisture not stick next to your body because one of the worst feelings is when it's freezing outside and it's not wicking away that moisture. You literally are covered, drenched in sweat. It has nowhere to go. And all of a sudden, you open up that shell because you just need to get some, you feel like you need to get some cool air and it just freezes you. And all of a sudden, because what you have is that sweat on your body is just going to rip away too much heat and it, you could lead to rapid heat loss. And that's why they say cotton kills. You need to be very careful with these really cheap cotton wool under or, or thermal long johns I see out there, they do not do a great job. Go with the synthetic ones, those at least somewhat wick away moisture, but I highly recommend, you know, something like, and if you can afford it, is go with something like Power Stretch Polar Tech. And this is designed specifically to fit on your body comfortably and to wick away moisture. So on the base layer, look for something and don't be afraid. I, I think I've got like two or three, uh, body suits by a company called Carol Davis Sportswear. And I love these because they just do exactly, I've had them for 10 years. I've done reviews on them. I'm not going to get into it too much detail, but investing in a good base layer. Another option is if you've got Under Armour or a performance type of uh, athletic wear that actually is made to fit close to the body. Those work as well. But again, it's about pushing the moisture into the next layer, which is the insulating layer. Okay, so the insulating layer, this is all about heat retention. And so the first one was about wicking away moisture. The next one is about keeping you warm. The cool part with the insulating layer is that you can mix and match. You don't have to go all wool. You don't have to go all synthetic fiber. You can mix and match them. Again, their purpose is to keep in the heat. And they do that by trapping in air and also using the natural properties of what I just mentioned. So you're going to see this. Wool is a great example. And when I say wool, that could be cashmere. That's any type of animal hair. The other one is going to be synthetics. Uh, We see like performance fleece. All these fleeces you see out there, they're actually made from plastic. Now, Believe it or not, those were designed specifically to help retain heat. The actual shape of the fiber is pretty good. So, this is, they're actually good examples. They're inexpensive. Probably the best thing about them is that they are inexpensive and that if you get them wet, they still retain some of their heat retaining properties. So, that last one, you shouldn't be looking to get super wet while you're out there. But I know in some cases, you can't avoid it, especially if you're deep, you know, you're under the water and you need something, but synthetics do a pretty good job. Make sure if, if you're going to be doing diving that you find something specific for that. I, I'm not even going to pretend I'm an expert there, but 
Synthetics are cheap. That's probably another thing, great thing about them. You're also going to go to, let's look at downs. And so down, comes from, it's the small feather uh, from different types of, uh, of birds, and you'll find that the down does an excellent job, perhaps one of the best. Another great thing about down is that it's incredibly light. So you can have a big down vest or down insulating jacket, and this thing is going to do a great job keeping you warm. The downside of down, sounds kind of funny there, but is that if you get it wet, it becomes almost absolutely worthless. So down, once it gets moist, it's going to just lose all of its fluff. It's going to lose almost all of its insulating properties, and it takes a long time to get rid of that moisture. So the last thing I haven't talked about, and this is more specialty, is going to be set the cell system. You'll see these, uh, especially in higher end, uh, for men that don't have to be very mobile and can deal with a bit more weight, let's say you're going to be you know, going through the Iditarod, then in that case, a great cell system. And what I mean by cell, it's, it's basically it's set up in compartments and it's made to trap air. This does an excellent job of retaining heat. Uh, I'll link you to a company that I know uses a lot of cell structure in maintaining and ins having an insulating uh, properties on their clothing. And this is something, again, you don't see it very often. We saw it. I, I had one piece of gear in the military. Absolutely loved it. It was probably on the edge of being made from synthetic, but it used cells. Basically, it was on the inside. It just was always made to be kind of fluffy. And this thing, it was almost impossible to destroy. And it did a great job of insulating by keeping out the cold and uh, making sure that any, any heat my body was creating was kind of reflected back in and kept. So that's the insulating layer. The last layer that we're going to talk about is the protective layer. And we're talking about shells here like Gore-Tex. These, the big thing with the shell is that it should encapsulate the insulating layer and keep out the wind, keep out the elements like any type of sleet, any type of rain, any type of snow, and allow the insulating layer to do its job. Now, you're probably asking yourself, getting back down to uh, the, the, the base layer, where does all that moisture go that's been wicked out? Well, the great part is if you've got the right type of insulating layers, wool's a great example, it can retain some moisture and still feel dry, uh, up to 30% of its weight. But if you're going to be sweating a lot, then you want to look at an outside shell layer that can sweat, in a sense, release moisture as well. Basically, it goes one way. It doesn't, it won't allow moisture in, but it will allow moisture out. I can tell you that this is going to really notch up the price of that outside base, uh, that shell. And if you don't need it, well, it, it is something that you know possibly look to skip. But if you do need it, do not skip here. And again, that's why really high-end uh, outdoor gear, you see a big escalation in price on some of this stuff. So uh, the last thing, oh, I didn't really hit on this too much, but don't forget your extremities. And you can have both a base layer and an insulating layer and uh, a protective layer. Although you'll usually see those combined. You usually find out uh, what, what I find with gloves is that there are these really nice little glove liners we would use on the towers. They were silver. Kind of felt like Michael Jackson or something like that. But they, they, fit, they were really lightweight and we wore those underneath some bigger, heavier gloves that were insulated work gloves. And of course, the insulated work gloves were made so that they would protect you from any type of sharp object. So, and they also had a little bit of insulation built in. So that was like a combination of, of a couple layers there. The same with, with your shoes. Make sure you, you've got on a good pair of socks, which will be able to wick away moisture and be able to keep your feet warm. And the boots. Don't, don't skimp on your boots. You want to go with something that does a great job insulating and keeping the cold out because your feet, your extremities are going to be some of the first things to get cold. Okay, this has been Antonio Centeno with Real Men Real Style. We've talked about the three layers when it comes to keeping yourself warm out there in cold weather. And if you've got any other questions, reach out to us at Real Men Real Style or maybe down in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.